All right, it is day number two. And again, anyone is welcome to join us for this Bible study. And if you have my number and you want to text me the answers, feel free to do so. I uh, hope you guys are doing well. It is a rainy day here in Hawaii. And so just kind of staying indoors and uh, make sure to do your praises and prayer requests. And if you can, get outdoors, get a little sunshine. Still do some you know, social distancing, stay away from some people, things like that. Uh, but that doesn't mean you can't get outside and enjoy and exercise, okay? And so make sure to do that, but more importantly, go to God's Word. Let's open in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you now. Just thank you so much for who you are and what you do for us every single day. I uh, pray that anyone that watches this video is encouraged and uh, help us to grow in our relationship with you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, yesterday's Bible study was from the book of Joshua. Today's Bible study is going to be from the book of Ephesians. So go to the New Testament, Ephesians chapter number 4. Go ahead and get there, Ephesians chapter number 4. We're just going to be looking at a few verses today, uh, chapter 4, verses 26 to 32. All right, so uh, let's start off verse number 26. It says there, Be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Notice it says there, be angry and sin not. Talking about wrath. Verse 27, neither give place to the devil. Verse 28, let him that stole steal no more. I don't know if you've seen there. Unfortunately, uh, I've seen a video in Mexico and I've seen a few security camera videos here in America and probably all over the world. There's been a lot of stealing going on. And I know that there can be cause for panic right now. There can be cause for uh, worry. But you know what? If you trust in the Lord, if you have a solid relationship with Him, and if you're going to God's Word, you don't need to do that. So let him that steals, uh, stole steal no more, but rather let him labor. We need to work for our goods. Working with his hands, the thing which is good that he may have, to give to him that needeth. And you know what? There's a lot of people that are in need. I have a lot of respect for a lot of the grocery stores, uh, at least specifically here on Oahu. I don't know about other stores, but I've seen uh, Foodland and Costco and Walmart and several others. They are doing specific hours for senior citizens only. And because we went crazy. A lot of the younger generation went crazy. They started hoarding things and they just wanted for themselves. This verse says, be able to give to him that needeth. There are people out there that need. So if you do have extra food, and I know it sounds funny, extra toilet paper, offer to someone. Uh, just yesterday, uh, we had someone parked right in front of our house. They were about to leave, and we had some extra toilet paper. And Miss Kathleen went out and asked, do you need some? And she said yes. So we gave her some extra toilet paper and wished her a happy day, and hopefully that's an encouragement to her. And so that's what we need to do. We need to be blessings to those that are in need. Verse 29, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Okay, communication. You are going to be quarantined in your house for a long time. That means you're going to be around your brothers and sisters, or you're going to be around your cousins, your parents. You guys are going to get on each other's nerves, all right? But that doesn't give you the excuse to use bad language towards them. It says edifying. Edifying means to build up. Say something kind. Make sure when your parents are doing something for you, say thank you. Uh, give a compliment to that brother that's irritating you or that he wants to just play one more round on that video game. Tell him, hey, you did a good job. Play another round. Be selfless. But your words do carry weight. And so when you use them in a bad way, when I was in youth group, we used to say edification, not terrification. Terrification is not a real word, but that's what we used to say. Basically, edify, build people up, don't tear people down. All right, so make sure you're using kind words. Verse 30, grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed into the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Watch your words, guys. Verse 32, here we go. Be kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. You are going to be tested 
in this because you're used to be you're used to going to school you're used to being around a lot of people and you you're used to kind of having your own space and, and being able to do your own thing right now you're kind of stuck at home and this is really your kindness level is really going to be tested so you i would encourage you memorize this verse on your own be kind one to another i remember when i was close to your guys' age uh, my mom used to make great barbecue chicken all right covered in my favorite sauce bullseye barbecue sauce and a lot of times she would make enough where we'd have leftovers the next day and i would always get home from school first and so i got home from school one day and there were two big pieces of barbecue chicken so i went to the microwave popped them both in heated them up poured me a nice tall glass of mountain dew and right when the microwave beeped and i opened it up the door opened and it was my older brother danny and he said hey let me get one of those pieces of chicken you know what i did i licked both of them and i should not have done that that was not kind okay and if danny if you're watching i'm still sorry <laughs> and so uh we look back on it you know i'm older and look back on it and laugh now but at the time it was very very mean my brother was very upset he actually told on me and I got in trouble with my parents, you know, really shouldn't have done that. And that was not kind of me. But the great thing was, uh, the next part there, it says forgiving one another. He forgave me. Uh, and there's things he's done to me. You know, he's my older brother that I've forgiven him for. And the reason we do that is that, next, that last part, it says, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. And so practice kindness, guys. Make sure that you are going out of your way to be kind and if something really does irritate you or frustrate you or or you kind of do feel that anger coming up uh take some time and go to your room go outside separate yourself from whoever it is that that's kind of getting to you and spend that time with the lord remember say this verse all right because it's very hard to be mad and talk to god at the same time really really difficult so make sure you're being kind showing kindness and and i know uh we are all just human we're going to make mistakes and let me encourage you with this last thing too if you do act out in anger make sure you quickly apologize go to that person tell them you're sorry you're going to try to do better make sure you ask for forgiveness to the lord too all right here's your three questions guys and make sure to text me these answers number one what does edify mean you might have to go back and rewatch this video if you weren't paying close attention. What does edify or edification mean? Number two, what was the name of my brother who I took the chicken from? What was his name? And number three, what does Ephesians chapter five, verse number one tell us to do? Now remember, we were in Ephesians four, but that, that was the end of the chapter. I want you guys to look at the next verse and tell me what are we supposed to do. All right, I hope you guys are having a great day. Stay in God's word. And I look forward to hearing your responses. Have a great day. Amen.